All right, this is my first time doing a video for this particular fly. Uh, this is probably easily my favorite and most used uh, still water pattern. I, I do use it in rivers too, but it's it's mostly a still water pattern. Um, what I'm doing now is I've got I've got a piece of six aught uni thread and olive, and I'm just kind of making a loop out of it with a just a standard overhead knot. I'm going to lay that aside for a minute, and I've got this plume of of olive marabou. Um, I went through and I, I plucked one out that had some particularly long fibers because I'm going to use the same clump of marabou for the tail, the body, and uh, the extended body, and the actual body. Um, so you want to make sure that these fibers have some good length to them. And the reason why I strip off one side of them is this is kind of a pain, which you'll see that's the common theme uh, with making the body because, you know, there's no rigidity at all with marabou. So every little thing you do, you've got to make sure that you're, you know, doing it the right way. And there's quite a lot of, you know, sleight of hand uh, involved in this. So I fold this over just to get as many of the fibers together as I possibly can. And that's because I want to make sure that the tips are as aligned as they possibly can be. Um, I know they're not going to be perfectly aligned. It's, it's certainly not a material that you can stack, but it's really not that big of a deal. It just keeps slipping out of my hand here. That should be good. And then just kind of eyeball it a little bit, make sure that they're somewhat aligned. And then you can snip that off and make sure that you keep holding on to them. There should be good. All right. So we'll clump that together. Just kind of run your fingers all the way down, get it all straight and ready to go. And this is the importance of, of tying that knot in the thread ahead of time. Because once you have this uh, cinched up in your fingers, you know, you're not going to be able to fiddle with anything else because you have to hold it. So I'll slip that loop right over the top. Straighten it out a little bit more. Hold it as tight as I possibly can. You got to try to get one of the tag ends between some of your free fingers and then pull it as tight as you can. And then at some point, maybe so it doesn't move on you, you're going to have to pinch the actual loop in with your fingers holding the marabou and get it cinched in. And once you do, once you get it to this point right here, then you're in pretty good shape. So I'll tighten it, lay it down, tie in one more loop to kind of double knot that. And then once you tie one, the, the second one will just sit right in where you want it. Tighten that up. And honestly, the, the biggest pain in the, in the you know what part is pretty much done. So I'm just going to kind of clamp that so I can expose the tag ends of my thread because I want to get those snipped off close. Now one thing I can say, the actual tying of the fly is unbelievably easy. It's a very, very easy pattern to tie. Uh, making the extended body is what takes up, you know, really any of the time at all. What I tend to do is, you know, I'll tie up probably, you know, six extended, six of the extended bodies and then go right at it with the flies. And then, you know, the fly itself takes five minutes to tie tops. So if you have any super glue or any kind of resin or anything, that'll just kind of help keep that knot from sliding. Uh, the knot won't come undone, but it can slide on the material if a fish grabs it. So a little bit of glue or a little bit of resin or something on there is really, really going to help with that. <clears throat> Again, it's not really the knot coming out. It's the, the sliding of the knot over that marabou. And what will happen is if a fish grabs it and you don't have any glue or anything on there, uh, slowly, little by little, it'll pull a couple of fibers out and a couple of fibers out. And the more fibers that get pulled out, the more that that knot is not cinched down on the material, and that's when it'll, it'll all start coming apart. So glue that up pretty good, or cure it if you're using resin. i got to get a new battery in this thing. Okay, and we're good. Now, at this point, I need something to kind of hold it. And I don't really want to, you know, put the knot in trouble. So I'm going to grab these, uh, these hackle pliers and put those with the tip right over the knot. And the, the reason why I like these pliers is it gives you a nice little loop where you can hang the material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my vise and I have it 
I paused the video so I can move this. I have it hung on my bobbin holder, and it just creates, you know, a nice little, um, a nice little way for you to access the material. Now here's where it gets tough. Try to not twist the marabou. Um, if you twist the marabou, what that does is it, it kind of clamps down all of those tiny little webby fibers that you kind of want. So really what you have to do is you have to just kind of stroke a chunk of it and try to separate this into thirds. It doesn't have to be perfect because once you start braiding it, it'll all wedge it together. So, but you got to just make sure you get three little chunks that you're working with. So once you get one, try to get the other, and once you get two kind of gripped, fold it over, and then we're going to start braiding. Hopefully you know how to braid. <clears throat> if you don't, it's unbelievably easy. And we're just going to keep going with this. I mean, the damn body itself doesn't really have to be all that long. So you don't really have to do a ton of braids, but we want to make sure just in case you lose a little bit of ground or anything like that, that, you know, you're able to salvage all the work that you did. So we're just going to kind of keep going and going and going and try to braid as much of this as we can. I don't know why that keeps losing focus, but I think you have an idea of what we're doing. Now already, right now, we're long enough. You know, we're good. But I'm going to keep going just to make sure all those fibers are secured. Oh, yeah, it kind of popped out a little. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. It popped out a little bit there. So I'm going to cut my losses, clamp it with my fingers. And now I'm going to take the hackle pliers off of the knot, now that I have exactly what I want. And then I'm going to take those pliers, and I'm going to reposition them where my fingers are to save my work. So I'm going to kind of clamp that down. Now I'm going to take the hackle pliers, and right there where the braiding stops... We're going to clamp that right down, and then we're good. So the body's all made. We're all set and good to go. Let me pause this. Okay. Now, I've got a size 14 uh, heavy scud hook. And I'll explain, you know, the differences between a couple of things when we're done here. But I got Olive UTC 70 on there, and we're going to get going at the head. These are kind of cool. I don't even really know where you can get these. Um, these are black damsel eyes, and I got them at a flea market, and they're in a very old package from a fly shop that doesn't exist anymore. But to be honest with you, I've tied these with mono eyes. Uh, another thing that I tie these with are uh, bead chain eyes. You can get size small bead chain, um, and it, it, they'll all do the same thing. So it's not like these are really crucial to the pattern, but I really do like these, uh, these dedicated damsel eyes. They're pretty cool. And I'm going to tie these in on the bottom of the hook. And I'll explain why a little bit later. <clears throat> really, it depends on what kind of hook you're using and what kind of weight you're using. You've got to make sure that when you tie these, if you're gonna if you're gonna use them in a river, it, it doesn't really matter. You can dead drift it and rip them through. But if you're in still waters, um, you want to make sure that this fly uh, sits right side up and doesn't flip over on you. So the relationship between how heavy a wire a hook you're using and how much weight you're using on the eyes. Um, you have to make sure you pay attention to that, and you can just test it in a glass of water. So with a heavier hook, I'm using lighter damsel eyes. If I use a lighter hook with heavier bead chain eyes, you got to do it a little bit differently too, um, but you, you can just experiment with it. So here's my braided body. I'm going to measure it out where I want it, which is probably right about there. So I'm going to grab that with my fingers, take the pliers off, and I'm not going to move up and down the shank when I tie this in. So I'm going to put it right where I want it. I'm going to put one really tight wrap, and I'm going to wrap right over the top of that, nice and tight, making sure that's not going anywhere. And then I'm going to fold the rest of the body back. <clears throat> so now I've got my thread advanced up. The body is on. And now I'm going to start tying in some of the things that I need for the, uh, for the wing case. For the wing case, you can use pheasant, turkey tail, all the same stuff you would use on any wing case for any nymph. I'm going to use turkey right now. I like to fold it over kind of like that so that when I fold it back the other way it spreads out and gives you a nice wing case. It's just the way that I tie in just about all my wing cases. <clears throat> I hate when I, that's one thing that bothers me is when it splits and you get all the marabou caught in it and everything. Those are the little things that come with this pattern but it is still pretty easy to tie. So I'm going to advance that all the way back to my tie-in point. 
and get rid of my excess. So once we free everything up and everything's tied in, you know, like I said before, that, that, braided, that braided body is going to be the tail, the extended body, and the actual body of this fly. So we're just going to wrap everything all the way up. Now I want to give it one wrap behind the turkey tail because I want there to be a nice transition from nymph to wing case. So there's my wrap behind the wing case. And remember, we only tied the, the tail in in one spot, so you want to kind of keep that from spinning a little bit. Tie that around there. And if you want to lighten up the, the wrap so that you get, you know, a different looking body, you can do that too. But once it gets wet, it doesn't matter. Marabou is just going to fold all the way back. It just absorbs so much water, so it doesn't matter. So we're going to get a couple of nice tight wraps here. Make sure that's really secured in there. Now what you got to do with this is got to be you got to be really careful once you get this secured. Now I on my vise I love that little knob right there cuz I can get my thread out of the way. But I want to pull that tight. And the reason why I say you got to be careful is it's easy to snip your thread right here. Now that little knob I have on my vise kind of prevents me from snipping my thread, but if you're using a vise that doesn't have that, um, you got to be really careful here. Just so you know, I I'm tying this on the Stanfo Elite I'm a big Stanfo fan. I've got the Cayman, I've got the Elite, um, just fantastic vices. Got a little bit of excess. I got to try to weasel out of there. <clears throat> now you can see that my wing case kind of twisted a little bit, but that's really not a big deal. You can just twist it right back over where it belongs, get it right back where it's supposed to be. Just all the turning of the materials kind of got it on the side, but it's really not a big deal. So realign everything, make sure we're all good to go. Secure it, it's not going anywhere now. And for the legs, I'm just gonna use uh, regular partridge, natural. This is a little bit of a lighter set of legs than I normally use. I usually use the darker feathers, but I do tie quite a few with these really light colored naturals. So I'm going to get that clamped down, snip that out of there. And like I said, from here on out, it's really just like tying any other nymph. You know, abdomen, legs, we'll fold the wing case over, same thing. Now with the wing case, I want this butted right up against the eye. So here's how I do this. I get that folded over. I don't want any bulk or anything. So I'm going to give a wrap loose. And as I tighten it, I'm going to pull up, and that'll cinch it right down in front of the beat, in front of the uh, damsel eyes. So I'll build up a little bit of a dam there. And if you snip this with scissors and you don't get enough, you can really get an ugly eye. So I like to get a razor blade, get that right in there, and my God, I got to get a new razor blade. I just keep using the same one. It's not even sharp anymore. I'm just rubbing it. It's not even cutting. <clears throat> so maybe that's what this video will do for me, inspire me to go change out my blade. So we'll secure all that, hide all the excess. Get that underneath. Give that a whip finish. A little bit of a sloppy head, but we're fine. So again, you know, the pattern itself is, is a really, really easy tie. Um, you, the only thing that's going to take, you know, any amount of time, any amount of anything is, is uh, making the body itself. But once you get the hang of it, you, you'll be fine. The only thing that takes some time is just kind of feeling where you have to position the marabou because, you know, with it being such a light material, uh, trust me, it can really move around on you. So that is my braided extended body damsel nymph. Um, if I was going into a still water and I had to have one fly, I, it, it would probably with no question be this. Um, I fish it with a, a level of confidence where I don't even really, I don't even really follow what you would normally do with a damsel nymph. You know, they always say cast it out and bring it into shore. I don't even do that. I just throw it out and trust me, if a brook trout sees it, you know, they're going to grab it. Um, I use it in rivers quite a bit. Um, you know, and it doesn't really have to be slack water, but you know, I'm not throwing this into riffles or anything. I'll pull it through you know, some smooth runs or a pool. Uh, it's easily one of my favorite flies. I also have it in a couple other colors too. Um, I, I do them in brown. This one's a little beat up. I've caught a bunch of fish on this one. 
brown, I do olive, I do a mix. So it's a great fly. Hope you liked it. Hit subscribe.